Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malik here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for July 28th, 2020, recorded around 3.04 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, we are continuing to take a look at potential tropical cyclone 9, which is located right now to the east of the Lesser Antilles, and impacts could begin to those regions as soon as tonight and in through the next few days, especially uh, for areas over here to the north of Barbados. So let's jump right into it. This is the official National Hurricane Center forecast path. Right now, as of the 11 o'clock advisory, a new uh, track map will be coming out about 5 o'clock. You can see tropical storm warnings have been issued for just north of Barbados for portions of the Lesser Antilles, Antigua, St. Bar Bartholome, uh, portions of or basically all of uh, Puerto Rico. A tropical storm watch has been issued for the Dominican Republic to the Haiti borderline over there. So there is a fairly large area of impacts expected over the next few days. This eventually will cross into the Bahamas where some uh, slight strengthening is possible before making a second landfall here currently in Florida. Now, there's a lot of considerable uncertainty in regards to how strong this is going to be and exactly where it's going to end up. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. So what happened with this system? Well, we have an overall broad system. This is uh, from earlier this morning. If you watched the video earlier, this is the same graphic I used earlier this morning. But you notice how this is a rather broad circulation. This is a rather broad circulation with two distinct lobes of energy, one to the southwest and one to the north and east. And what's been happening over the, the last few uh, hours is we've seen a better consolidation within the southwestern lobe where we could have an area of low pressure uh, somewhere in this area. Now, you notice how basically what's happening right now is you have a general broader area of low pressure with two lobes of energy and sort of some cross energy located in through here. Well, this is now trying to be the main energy, and that is coming very close to uh, Barbados, which is located right here. So for you folks down there in Barbados, you're going to get some showers and thunderstorms, gusty winds, squally conditions during the day today. And this will be quickly passing over as it's moving west at about 23 miles per hour. Very quick moving system. And again, you can see that the little uh, overshooting tops here, indicative of these strong thunderstorms shooting up into the atmosphere. And they are colder than the surrounding uh, clouds over here. So they're popping up more as these little uh, puffy, almost, you know, towering uh, signals right now. And that's our cumulus or chelionimbus developing over here, developing these showers and thunderstorms. This looks to be a remnant uh, mesoscale convective vortex in through here, and it's going to be interesting to see what Recon finds. And speaking of what Recon found, again, this is just erroneous data right there, so I'm not really interested in looking at that right now. It just seems to be very erroneous data. But you notice on the passes through Recon here, not really impressive. It, not a closed circulation at all, especially where they measured right now in the north in, northeast Eastern quadrants, they found absolutely zilch. And if you go down here now, your center of circulation, according to the Hurricane Center, is roughly at about 13.8 or so. I think it's I think it's 13.8. Let me just make sure, just to be sure. I should have had this pulled up earlier, so my bad. It is actually 14.1. So their center of circulation is going for about 14.1, which would be somewhere right in about here. Again, we haven't seen anything so far, and my uh, my conclusion is that we're going to have something trying to form over here. And if you take a look at what's going on on the, the satellite, and basically, you have this tilted wave axis that we've been talking about over the last several days that's kind of tilted from uh, southwest to northeast. But now it's starting to tilt over into more of a vertical position. And what that's going to cause, this whole area is going to rotate counterclockwise over uh, today and tonight and in through portions of tomorrow. And that should allow for some gradual uh, consolidation in a, in 
the potential for a, a low level center to form. We could have a mid level center, which is indicative in here with some of those turning, uh, the, the turning in the atmosphere, but that is probably a mid level center and not a low level. Now, of course, you know, reconnaissance is going to confirm that you know, or confirm or deny that, but you know, you can see they're not really finding any evidence. Maybe a slight wind shift here uh, coming from more southwest and, and blowing more uh, to the south and east here. So we'll see, um, but I'm not really anticipating them to find a closed low-level center at the moment. Now, one of the things that's going on behind this, this is taking a look here at the 850 millibar relative uh, vorticity product uh, from the Central University of Wisconsin-Madison site. The, the reds and, and uh, whites here are your higher vorticity in the atmosphere. You notice this is still an elongated area of vorticity. There's no real closed area right now, but it is a little bit stronger heading uh, ever so close to the Lesser Antilles. And where this eventually forms is going to be a very big, significant uh factor in terms of the track and future intensity of uh, what will be Isaias, uh, Isaias, uh, something like that. I think it's uh, Isaias, I think is how you say it. I think it's a Spanish name. Uh, anyway, so what we're taking a look at here is the HMON. This is the old GFDL hurricane model, uh, now revamped and improved into the HMON model. Which they can look here at the uh, this is the 10 meter uh, winds and the mean sea level pressures here with the wind barbs. You notice how right now we have this area of access to the north where we have the stronger winds out here. That's what Recon did find earlier. They, they found these the access to stronger winds that was located up and through here with relatively weak ana uh, anemic winds over near the actual quote unquote sensor. Now, as we progress throughout the next few days or so, this is by hour 33 on Wednesday. This is by uh, 21Z Wednesday. I think it's moving a little bit uh, too slow, but we'll see. Uh, this is now passing through the Lesser Antilles Tuesday night in, in, into Wednesday or tonight into Wednesday. And this is going to bring some impacts. Again, gusty winds, squally conditions. Uh, this is the northern part of the island chain up here. This is going to bring impacts. There's Puerto Rico right there. This is by 0Z zero zero, uh, on Thursday. So right before about 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, some uh, deep convective uh, area right here that is promoting these stronger surface winds, pressure of 995. Conversely, if we take a look here at the uh, h Wharf Para, this is basically the latest installment and newer uh, runs of the H Wharf and newest version that's coming out next week. Um, again, you can see that here's uh, Bart, or here is Puerto Rico. We backed that up a little bit uh, to about 21Z Wednesday. So about the same as the, the H Mon. Again, about 1002, but you notice the axis of winds are located well away from where this low level sensor would be according to the model that tries to consolidate here by hour 42 at about one o'clock in the morning on Thursday, passing just near Puerto Rico, St. Croix and the US uh, British Virgin Islands out here. And then eventually what could be getting close here to uh, Dominican Republic and um, Hispaniola as a whole uh, over the next few days or so. And again, because of this very large envelope of energy, if we just kind of back out here to the uh, actual, uh, the true color zoom, and we just take a little bit of an earlier look at this. Uh, this is from earlier this afternoon, but you notice how large it is. Uh, you roughly correlate that to right up here. The whole island of uh, Hispaniola is going to be impacted one way or another by this because this is such a large system. It's not just a small little system that's going to skirt to the north. Now, sure, the radius of maximum winds may not be on the island, you will have impacts one way or another to portions of uh, the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, uh, Hispaniola as a whole will have impacts. So it is important to, to not just focus on where the center of circulation is going to be. Impacts are already beginning to portions of Barbados now. Trinidad and Tobago getting in on this very southern axis here. Again, this is all moving off towards the west and then eventually northwest. But this will be, bring a large amount of impacts to these areas over the next few days. And regardless of whether or not this is a tropical cyclone by this time, doesn't really matter. 
matter as impacts will be the same regardless of that fact. Now, if we go here to the, the uh, GFS forecast model, this is the uh, 12Z Ron Valid as of 7 a.m. this morning. And a couple of things we're looking at here, we're really mainly looking at the 500 millibar or the, uh, the 18,400 foot level in the atmosphere at the geopotential height, basically the, the strength of the high pressure in the atmosphere. These reds and darker reds are your stronger pressures and your greens and uh, yellows are your weaker pressures up here in the northern latitudes right now. So, uh, Potential Tropical Cyclone 9 is located right here as of 7 a.m. this morning. We run that out to where it is uh, at about uh, 8 o'clock this evening. You notice it's approaching the Lesser Antilles right now. And you notice what's also happening. We get this building of the ridge right now, the ridge axis that does shift a little bit to the east here. Uh, over the next few hours, this ridge is consistently building in across portions of the open Atlantic here. What that's doing is mainly forcing this, uh, because it's a weaker system too, it's driving some of these stronger trades right here, pushing uh, against the system, really forcing it to go off towards the west and not really allowing this to gain any significant latitude. And that's why it's also moving so fast, which is also another detrimental fact to the system is the fact that it's moving relatively fast. Now, as we go on here through the next 48 hours, this is by about 7 a.m. on Thursday, you notice the GFS has this just north of Puerto Rico right now, and the ridge has backed off quite substantially, although there is still a pretty good nudge here in the ridge, but you notice what's beginning to happen. This is our little trough axis, our, our first shortwave axis, that's going to be eroding some of this ridge here over the next few days or so. Again, how strong this is, is very uncertain by even two days. Usually we have very good confidence on the, the intensity of forecasting two days out, but in this case, we don't know. This is a very large storm, and as such, it's very hard to even pinpoint a storm that hasn't even formed a closed center yet, and that's really the key. So as we progress going forward, this is then by 84 hours on uh, 7 a.m. Saturday morning, you notice how this uh, ridge of high pressure right here is a little bit stronger. If you kind of back that out here, you notice how it, it's much of the same, but just a little bit of a nudging. We also don't have as much of a shortwave chart for the central United States. Again, this is coming now close to Cuba after passing uh, dangerously close to Dominican Republic and Haiti and Hispaniola as a whole. And then by 120 hours at the very end of the forecast period, sitting here in the Bahamas and south and east of Florida, with eventually the surface trough that's now beginning to erode this area of low pressure, or high pressure rather, as this area moves to the east and northeast, eroding this area of high pressure, allowing for what if there is a stronger storm in here to move further to the north. And this is very key. A stronger storm is going to tend to go more poleward or more northerly direction. So this is the big thing that we don't know in the, the model guidance is that why is A, the GFS showing a weaker system? And real quickly, if we go to the 700 and 400 millibar relative humidity, this is one of the things. If we zoom in here on the southeastern United States and back this up here to about hour 84, as this is approaching here at the very bottom of the screen, you notice what's happening. The storm isn't picking up as much of a mid-level anti-cyclone because this is a weak storm by this point. And a weaker storm is more susceptible to dry air entrainments across here. And this dry air is being caused by a little bit of shear on the southwestern side pushing it into this cyclone. And you notice by hour 96 that is very representative that this bigger moisture bubble over here, well, it's now beginning to get eroded and pushed away from our center of circulation down here. So this is one of the things that the GFS is seeing that is preventing significant intensification of the system, and thus it is weaker and further to the west here. Conversely, if this was a stronger system by this point, it is going to be further to the uh, east here and potentially further north. And again, there is pretty uh, pretty big model guidance spreads uh, within the next about five days or so.
And again, if this is the European forecast model here at the hour 48, showing much of the same, except now our system right here, instead of being uh, north of Puerto Rico, it's crashing into the Dominican Republic and Hispaniola as a whole uh, before kind of sliding south and ending up uh, right off the tip of Cuba there. And that's all because of this ridge of high pressure strength plus the weaker the weaker storm this the weaker storm this really is by this point it's going to go further west and thus not allow a more poleward direct direction uh, to the storm so there's a lot of possibilities as to where this ends up going so the biggest thing that i can tell you right now is that if you live in cuba the bahamas florida uh, you need to be paying close attention to the progress of the system. And of course, it goes without saying, if you live down here in the Lesser Antilles and um, D Dominican Re Dominica Republic and, and um, Hispaniola as a whole, Puerto Rico, St. Bartholomew, and St. Antigua, uh, and Antigua, meaning those areas, even Barbados, needs to be paying close attention to the progress of potential tropical cyclone 9. Again, we are a we are a far ways away from understanding what is going to happen with the system. Luckily, we will have aircraft reconnaissance going out tomorrow. Uh, the upper level aircraft reconnaissance out tomorrow uh, morning or tomorrow afternoon, rather, to sample the environment uh, really out in this area of the world. So it's going to be a very long mission, about 12 hours or so. Now, real quickly, if this does have enough juice and enough steam to really maintain itself out here, water temperatures are plenty warm, about 29 to 30 Celsius, and the upper ocean heat content in through here, well, it speaks for itself. This is basically in the upper third of the chart out here. The upper third of the chart is right here, and that is certainly in the upper third of the chart as we progress grass throughout here if it were to stay on its current uh, track so you know we have a lot to watch here over the next few days or so and of course i am getting my camera systems ready uh for deployment again right now uh we are still unsure so uh, we are getting our camera systems ready we are finishing up our last round of testing today and then we are going to begin rushing to completion everything else which really there's not much else to do uh it's just basically um fitting a couple more things in there uh fixing up the cooling system a little bit or our coolant system and that should be good to go so uh, this would be about on sunday by the time this gets here into florida uh if it does stay on this current uh, track which is almost certain to change uh, but as it stands right now uh our camera system project is ready and will be deployed on sunday if uh if this track does verify so our camera systems are just about ready to be deployed uh, we will have to figure out a location uh, and if we are going to work with additional people such as Mark Suddeth, if, if he plans to come down here, I've already reached out to him. So I will let everyone know what is going on with that. Of course, uh, you can find more information about our camera system project in the eye to the sky on the uh, top right corner in one of the cards that I'll put in closer to the beginning of the, the video, probably about four minutes in. I'll put a card to that. So if you guys do want to go check that out, make sure to go back and look at that. Uh, of course, I'll, uh, it's, it's in my playlist on my channel, the Unmanned Hurricane uh, Project, and on my channel trailer as well. All right. Uh, so that's going to be the, the last of two updates for today. And we are going to start getting ready now for deployment of our camera systems. We have it all pretty much ready to go, like I said. And we are going to begin getting ready for deployment of those. So some great things coming. We'll be able to bring coverage to you as uh, what will be Tropical Storm Isaias or uh, Isaias uh, makes landfall here in Florida if it in fact does. It is currently expected to do so, but this track and intensity will change greatly over the next few days. All right. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Stay weather aware. Be safe. And I'll see you guys back here bright and early tomorrow morning. Stay safe, everyone.